Welcome to the Anatomy and Physiology 2 series on the urinary system. Today we'll go through multiple models showing us both the kidneys as well as the tubes in the bladder that are involved in urinary excretion, and we'll do a pig kidney dissection as well. So we'll start by looking at the kidneys themselves. The kidneys are two kidney bean shaped structures that sit in the upper lumbar region in our back. Looking at the kidneys, we see that the right kidney will sit a little bit lower than the left kidney, and the reason for that is that the right side of the liver, the right lobe of the liver, is a lot larger than the left lobe, and it actually takes some of that room away from the kidney. Looking at the kidneys, um, we see that this little indentation right here on the kidney um, is called the hilum. And the hilum is where we have the renal artery and vein entering the kidney, and the ureter, this tube you see here, leaving the kidney. Okay, so this indentation is the hilum. Um, speaking of, this red vessel that we see leading to the kidney is the renal artery. Right here, and then the renal artery on this side is covered up by the vein. And then the blue vessel that you see right here is the renal vein. We also see this long tube coming out of the hilum of the kidney on um, either side. And these tubes are called the ureters. The kidneys themselves are responsible for filtering the blood and making urine, which is a waste product, a way that we get rid of wastes, excess fluid, and excess ions. So that urine that's produced by the kidneys is sent through these ureters down into this bladder, which is just a storage chamber, an area for us to store that urine until we're ready to void it. Looking at the bladder itself, we see that the majority of the bladder wall here, this kind of dark pink color, is the detrusor muscle. Detrusor, D-E-T. And after the bladder is full, when we're ready to void, that detrusor muscle will contract in order to push the urine out of the bladder. Looking at the inner mucosa of the bladder, we see that it has lots of folds in it. And these folds are called rugae. And they allow for stretching of the bladder as it fills with urine. So when the bladder is fully stretched, you won't actually see these rugae or folds anymore. If you look down here at the bottom of the bladder, we see this little upside down triangle area. Hey, this is a smooth area that's called the trigone. So this place doesn't have all of these folds or rugae. It's a lot more smooth tissue. The trigone is formed by these two little openings at the top, which are called the ureteral orifices or ureteral openings. Okay, and these are the holes where the ureters actually enter into the bladder to dump urine in. And then the bottom of the triangle is formed here by the entrance to this exit tube right here, which is called the urethra. Okay, so the ureters bring urine into the bladder. The urethra carries urine out of the bladder and eventually out of the body. Okay, and these three, um, these three points here okay, make up this trigone. And the trigone, again, is a smooth surface. It acts almost like a funnel, so that when the bladder is contracting to push urine out, the urine kind of gets filtered down and towards this urethra, so that it's being pushed down and exiting the bladder in the right area. On this model, this dark purple structure here at the bottom is showing us the prostate. So this happens to be a male um, urinary system. And the prostate actually encircles the urethra right underneath the bladder. So looking at this model here, we can see a section of the kidney or see inside the kidney a little bit better so that we can identify some of the structures that reside inside the kidney. Again, we're looking at the kidney here. This indented area right here is the hilum. And at the hilum, we see the renal artery bringing blood in. And in blue over here, the renal vein bringing blood out. This tube that's exiting the kidney, again, is the ureter. Looking at the kidney itself, um, we see that this outer area is covered with a renal capsule. So this brown area all around the outside is the renal capsule that forms the outer boundary of the kidney. Looking inside the kidney, we can divide this tissue up into a couple regions. This outermost region that we see out here, okay, so this outer like inch or so, is called the renal cortex. The renal cortex. Um, this is where we actually have most of our nephrons that do the filtering of the blood. So the blood is filtered out here in the renal cortex. The next section in is the renal medulla. 
The renal medulla is where we actually collect urine and start to bring that urine in towards the center of the kidney here. <clears throat> So if we look here at the renal medulla, we see that we have lots of these prominent structures here that are called renal pyramids. Renal pyramids, they look like triangles with the broad side out here by the cortex and the point coming in towards the center of the kidney. So each of these is a renal pyramid. In between the renal pyramids, we have these areas that are called renal columns. And the renal columns are actually made up of cortical tissue meaning it's the same tissue that's out here in the cortex that comes in um, in these renal columns here. And those renal columns just act as areas for blood vessels to travel through as they're getting out here to the cortex where the blood can actually be filtered to make urine. So we have the cortex and then in here we have the medulla. In the medulla we have all of these renal pyramids and in between the renal pyramids we have renal columns. When we look at the renal pyramids, at the very tip of the renal pyramid here, we have something called the renal papilla. So the point of each of these pyramids is the renal papilla. So the urine will be filtered down or carried down through this renal pyramid, and eventually it'll exit the pyramid through this renal papilla or point. At each renal papilla, we see these kind of cups here, these little funnel-shaped cups. These are called minor calluses or a minor calyx if it's just one. So this structure right here is a minor calyx. This structure right here is a minor calyx. This structure is a minor calyx, okay, minor calyx. What these are is they're literally just little funnels that collect the urine from this renal pyramid and then they all start to merge together to bring all of the urine together as we come towards the ureter. Where we have two or three minor calluses come together, we have another larger funnel called a major calyx. So right here would be a major calyx because you see we have one, two, maybe even three of these minor calluses come together. So this larger funnel here would be the major callus, calyx. Then when we have two or three major calluses come together, this last big section right here is called the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis is the last area that the urine comes to in the kidney before it leaves via the ureter. We can also look at this and look at the blood flow through the kidney. Um, we'll see that we have a series of arteries that will come into the kidney and then bring blood out towards the cortex where the blood is gonna be filtered. And then we have a series of veins that bring that blood back out towards the hilum and out of the kidney. So we said that this vessel right here was the renal artery. The renal artery branches and we have multiple segmental arteries. So the segmental arteries are just going to carry the blood out towards the different areas um, or segments of the kidney. Off the segmental arteries, we're gonna have all of these arteries called interlober arteries. So the interlober arteries are going to go through each of the renal columns. Okay, so in between these pyramids, we see a um, interlober artery, okay, interlober arteries. Those interlober arteries branch, and we see that they curve around the outside of these renal pyramids. So these vessels that are literally arcing around here in between the cortex and the medulla are called arcuate arteries, okay, they arc. So this is an arcuate artery, arcuate artery, arcuate, arcuate. Okay, all of these that are arcing around are the arcuate arteries. Then finally, out here in the cortex, we see all of these smaller arteries that are called interlobular arteries. Okay, so the interlober arteries are the larger ones here. The ones that are out here, the smaller ones are the interlobular arteries. And when we look at the actual nephron, which is the filtering unit in the kidney, we'll see that these interlobular arteries are going to end up delivering blood to the vessels that go right into the nephron, the filtering unit in the kidney. After the blood is filtered and collected from that nephron or filtering unit, which we'll look at in a second, um, we're going to end up passing it back to venous circulation. So when we look at the venous circulation that's exiting the kidney, it's almost exactly the opposite as the, um, the arteries that were coming in. So out here, the blue vessels, the small blue vessels, are the interlobular veins. 
The blue vessels that arc around here are the arcuate veins. The blue vessels that come down the center of these renal columns are the interlober veins. And then we end up making our way down here to the renal vein. Um, according to the text that we're using right now, it does not list a segmental vein as a vessel. Um, some surgery texts do list segmental veins. So for our purposes, we're not going to include the segmental vein. Okay, you guys just need to know the interlobular vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, and then the renal vein leaving the kidney back here. Okay. So speaking of the actual filtering units of the kidneys, which are called nephrons, We see that out in the cortex of the kidney, we have millions of nephrons, and these are where we actually do all of the work of the kidney. This is where we filter the blood and where we begin to produce um, urine, and then eventually what we'll do is we'll, we'll finalize that urine. We reabsorb all of the important nutrients that we need, and we excrete excess ions and fluid into the urine. So this model here is giving us a very kind of general view of what a nephron is. Just to get your bearings um, when we're looking at this, this area out here is showing us the cortex. This down here is showing us the medulla. Okay, so this area here would be showing us a renal pyramid, okay, heading down the renal pyramid and towards the papilla down here. So out here in the cortex, we see the majority of our nephrons. So this unit here with the blue and the green is a nephron. And then this white area is showing us a collecting duct that just collects urine from multiple nephrons. I'm looking at the blood vessels we just mentioned. Remember the blood vessels that go in between the renal pyramid and the cortex? Those were our arcuate, or arcuate vessels. So we have the arcuate artery and the arcuate vein. Then these would be the really small vessels that are running off of those arcuate vessels. So we have the arcuate artery, I mean the interlobular artery, and the interlobular vein. What we'll see is coming off of this interlobular artery, we have a vessel that leads into the nephron and then a blood vessel that leads out of the nephron. So this vessel here that's coming off of the interlobular artery and going into the nephron, this is called the afferent glomerular um, arteriole. The afferent glomerular arteriole. The one that's leaving is the efferent glomerular arterial. Okay, so afferent is going in, efferent is coming out. Once we look at the actual nephron itself, we see that it's made up of two major sections, and you can kind of equate them to a snake, like the big, round, bulbous head of a snake, and then the long, thin tube of a body of a snake. When we look at this bulbous head of the snake, this is called the renal corpuscle. Okay, as a whole, this unit is a renal corpuscle. So if we looked at this nephron, again, this big kind of purpley blue area is the renal corpuscle. Then all of the long tubes are the renal tubules, which we'll break them up into sections in a moment. Looking at this renal corpuscle, this is where we actually filter the blood. In the center of it, these kind of red lines are showing us a tuft of capillaries, intertwined capillaries. It's called the glomerulus. And then this capsule around the outside is called the glomerular capsule, or it's also referred to as Bowman's capsule. So what happens is we'll bring the blood into this glomerulus, we'll filter it out, some things out of the blood, and the filtrate that enters this capsule will then be funneled over here into this tube. And the filtrate will pass through the tube and we'll put excess wastes in it and we'll remove ions that we wanna keep and we'll remove glucose and nutrients that we wanna keep. And by the time we get to the end of these tubules, it's simply waste products. It's simply urine that we're going to be sending down and getting rid of. So looking at the tubules, we can break them up into multiple segments. This first kind of light green coiled area that we see right here is called the proximal convoluted tubule. We also have a distal convoluted tubule that we see here in darker green. So they're both called convoluted because they're twisted tubules. They're all twisted or convoluted. This initial one is the proximal convoluted tubule because it's located more proximally to this renal corpuscle. And then we'll go down from the proximal convoluted tubule, we go down into this tight hairpin loop. Okay, this is called the nephron loop, or also called the loop of Henle. 
From the nephron loop or loop of Henle, we continue on to the distal convoluted tubule, again in dark green. Looking at the top part here of this loop of Henle or nephron loop, you can see that the tubules are a little bit thicker here at the top. These areas are called the thick segment, and in lecture we'll talk about why that's important. Again, going from the distal convoluted tubule, the urine enters into the collecting ducts. Okay, so these are collecting ducts right here. They receive urine from multiple different nephrons. Okay, and then the urine all gets filtered down the renal um, pyramid towards the point or papilla at the tip of the pyramid. Where this collecting duct passes through the renal papilla, it becomes the papillary duct. So at the very bottom here, we'll call this the papillary duct. Finally, you'll see here all of these capillaries that are kind of surrounding this nephron. Okay, these are called the paratubular capillaries. These are here so that we can um, reabsorb important nutrients from the filtrate, and those important nutrients can cross into the bloodstream. So here we see Here we see another representation um, of the nephrons, okay, the filtering units of the kidney. So each, first we can look at the vessels here. Okay, remember that the vessels that are going horizontal like this are the arcuate vessels. So we have the arcuate artery and the arcuate vein. The vessels that are extending up into the cortex from the arcuate vessels are the interlobular. So we have the interlobular artery in red and the interlobular vein in blue. Then remember we said that off of this interlobular artery, off of this interlobular artery, we go straight into the afferent arteriole that's carrying blood into this nephron. So this would be the afferent arteriole going into the nephron and the efferent arteriole leaving the nephron and coming over here to the paratubular capillaries. Looking at the nephron itself, um, again, these head units here are the renal corpuscles. So in green, we see all of these renal corpuscles. If we're looking at this, this head unit as a whole, we'll call it a renal corpuscle. When it's sectioned, and you guys can see the difference between the capsule and the glomerulus inside, that's when I'll be asking you specifically if it's Bowman's capsule or the glomerulus. So in this case, these are just showing us the head unit as a whole, so we'll call those renal corpuscles. If you look coming out from the renal corpuscle in orange, Okay, this twisted tube that's orange is showing us the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule is going to dip down into the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle extends up and then in gray, this twisted area in gray is showing us the distal convoluted tubule. This distal convoluted tubule is going to carry the urine into the collecting tubule, okay, the collecting duct. These collecting ducts in yellow come down and then at the renal papilla, we see that they change into the papillary duct. So this is one last um, representation of the nephrons. Again, looking at this, this outer area here is showing us the cortex. Down here is showing us the medulla. And in blue, we see this renal pyramid area. So out here in the cortex, you can see that we have our nephrons. Looking at the nephrons, again, this, um, the vessel that's coming up here to bring blood towards them is called the interlobular artery. Off of the interlobular artery, the blood's going to go into the afferent glomerular arteriole. And that brings the blood into the glomerulus, the tuft capillary. It kind of looks like a flower here. Remember that this capsule, okay, that's going around the glomerulus is the glomerular capsule or Bowman's capsule. And then again, blood would leave the glomerulus via the efferent arterial, okay, efferent arterial. So then if we look at the tubules that are actually coming off of, um, actually coming off of these nephrons, Actually, I wouldn't ask you on this because they're not clear at all at this one. Um, the loop of Henle is clear. Um, in this case, this one over here would be the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, over here, this would be the distal convoluted tubule. And this is the loop of Henle, but this is an accurate representation, so I won't ask you on this. 
Um, we have collecting ducts. Okay, and then all the way at the bottom, going into our papillary duct. So here we have a much more detailed model of the glomerulus itself. Okay, so this is what the glomerulus actually looks like. Here we see this vessel here is the afferent arteriole, okay, the afferent glomerular arteriole. This is the one that brings blood in to the glomerulus okay, or into that, um, the nephron. So then this whole tuft of capillaries right here, this whole thing is called the glomerulus, all of these capillaries, it's the glomerulus. And then this vessel over here is the efferent arteriole that brings blood out of the glomerulus after it's been filtered. You can tell the difference between the two because the afferent arteriole is bigger. Okay, the one heading in is bigger. Also, when we look at this glomerulus, each of these kind of yellow cells here um, is showing us a type of cell that's called a podocyte. Okay, a podocyte. And that podocyte, the podocytes form a visceral epithelium over this glomerulus, over all of these capillaries. And in lecture, we'll talk about why those podocytes are important and how they help to build a filtration membrane or a filter for that blood to be forced across. So this capsule, or this outer portion here, is showing us the glomerular capsule, or Bowman's capsule. So the blood comes in, it gets filtered across um, or out of this glomerulus, and all of the stuff that enters into the capsular space here is the filtrate. And that filtrate ends up going into the tubules of the nephron. So this right here is showing us the proximal convoluted tubule, okay, the initial part of the tubule that the filtrate is going to enter, the proximal convoluted tubule. This over here is actually showing us the distal convoluted tubule. When we look at a really accurate representation of this, you'll see that as the tubules kind of twist around, the distal convoluted tubule passes right in between the afferent and efferent arteriole. And that, again, is going to be really important in lecture when we start to talk about um, the different hormones that are released here in this area. So the last thing that I'm going to show you guys today is an actual um, pig's kidney. Okay, and we'll look at the kidney and I'll show you guys some of the more obvious structures that we've learned that can be identified on the pig's kidney. So here is the pig's kidney. Um, looks to be a little bit bigger than ours, but pretty similar in size. Our kidneys are generally about five inches long and about two and a half inches wide and about one inch thick. Okay, so this is a little bit bigger. But looking at the kidney in general, you can see this indented area right here, remember it's called the hilum. And that's where we have our renal artery and renal vein enter and leave, and where the ureter leaves. So looking here, um, we're lucky because we have colors to help us identify which each of these structures are. So in red right here, this is showing us where the renal artery enters. And in blue right here, this is showing us where the renal vein leaves. Okay, this tube in blue is the renal vein. Then this tube that we see right here, which if I show you this way, you can see that it is a tube. This goes in this way. That's showing us the ureter that carries urine out of the kidney. Looking at the kidney, you see this outer area here is um, the renal capsule. And if we were to open it up, we have more colors to help us identify some of the structures. But generally speaking, this outer portion right here is the renal cortex, okay, where we filter the blood. And this intersection here is the renal medulla. In the medulla, we have all of these renal pyramids, these triangular shaped structures. And in between the renal pyramids, we have renal columns. Okay, this is a good representation right here, the renal column, because you can see the actual vessel traveling up through it. Remember that the tip of each of these renal pyramids is called the renal papilla. So this is the renal papilla, renal papilla, papilla. The renal papilla, remember, is where the urine um, is carried through and dumped into these small funnels that are called the minor, it's, this is a minor calyx. So you can see it's yellow because it would have urine in it. So at the base of each of these, this is a minor calyx. 
minor calyx, minor calyx. Where we have multiple, multiple minor calyces come together, we have a major calyx. So like this area here would be a major calyx. And then again, this last section here is kind of a large funnel where we have multiple major calyces come together. This is the renal pelvis. We can also see some of our vessels here. Um, remember that in between the renal pyramids and our renal columns, we have interlober vessels. So here in blue, you can see an interlober vein. Okay, again here, an interlober vein. Um, the arcuate vessels that arc around are a little bit harder to see, um, but you can see the interlobular vessels that radiate out here through the cortex. Okay, so right here you can see the interlobular veins, if I said it was a blue vessel, and then in red out here would be the interlobular arteries. They're a little harder to see. Okay, that's it. Please post if you have any questions.